All right. We're going to turn over the wheel here to Costa because he has what he thinks is an overreaction that I don't think is enough of a reaction. And I'm willing to go on record with something here that's very positive for Detroit sports. I think I've sold that correctly, but without saying anything, I'd like to give the wheels to a man who has coined the award-winning recipe for Costa Choli, Mr. James Anthony Costa. Our next guest, Frankie Avalon. Well, thank you, Mike. You're welcome. You made fun of me yesterday for always coming in here with an overreaction. Correct. And I think this is an overreaction, but maybe you're going to talk me out of it. Spencer Torkelson, who continues to hit home runs. Credit Kenny Cott on the prop yesterday. 19 of them since June 1st. Spencer Torkelson, turning a corner. Will be an all-star next season. Overreaction or not? Not. Torkelson, in the American League, has hit the most home runs among first basemen this season. The representative last year, this year at the All-Star Game, is Yandy Diaz, who's going to be 33. There is runway. If he's really figured it out, Mike, he could hit, what, 35 home runs next season? Who knows? He could be an all-star next season. I think he's an all-star next season. Am I overreacting to a hot stretch since June 1st? I mean, post-all-star, he's got an OPS over 900. Torkelson, all-star. Overreaction, or do you guys see it? Okay. So there's a lot to unpack, because what you're talking about is individual stuff, which mm-hmm. Torkelson, rightfully so, has been shredded. Correct. He's been primarily a god-awful baseball player in his time here. What he's done is put a few months together where – the thing we need most from him, which is his alleged prodigious power. Correct. It's what got him through. drafted first overall. Right. When I take you number one overall and I make you my first baseman, I need you to be Pete Alonzo. Mm-hmm. I need you to be a guy that is going to be the anchor point for a lineup. Now, I have no issue. Look, we talked about this before June started. I said he's got the rest of this season, 300 at bats roughly, to dictate what his future is going to be. Like, you can't send him down. He's got to play through it or play out of it or play his way out. Mm -hmm. What he's done is exactly what we've all wanted. So you saying he could be an all-star next year, I don't have a problem with it. But see, what I'm looking at, and it's difficult to do after a trade deadline where I feel like Scott Harris was body snatched by Al Avila with the E-Rod thing. Mm -hmm. I look at it like if Torkelson's real, and we know Riley Green is primarily real. And we now have Kerry Carpenter as a left-handed power source. Mm -hmm. And we know we're going to get a look at Parker Meadows. We're going to get a look at Colton Keith. We're going to get a look at some of uh, Justin Henry Malloy. We know the pitching is there. Here's what I'd like to tell you. Unless Scott Harris unzips his face and it's Al Avila inside, like the end of a Scooby-Doo episode, or unless Chris Illich says... You can't spend a penny. I'll take it a step further than Torque being an all-star. I'll take it a step further and tell you that your core has actually solidified before your eyes, and this team's going to be in a pennant chase in August next year. They are going to be a factor in this division next year. The pitching will be good enough. Will they win the division? I can't say it until I see their oh, offseason. You're so close, though, Mike. You're, you've I walked need, right up hey, to the edge. Just hey, say what you mean. Well, I need to see if Chris Illich is going to act like John Angelos or if Chris Illich is going to act like a real owner. And for people who didn't see those quotes from the, yeah, from John the Royals John Angelos, owner. basically, with the best team in baseball, not named the Braves, young, exciting, unbelievably talented, the Baltimore Orioles. He felt now was the time to bleep in the punch bowl and go, golly gee, it's going to be hard to hold on to all our stars unless I bilk all of your hard-earned money, scumbags. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said. I think what you're seeing with the Tigers is the formation of a core. And if you form that, what you need to do in free agency lessens and you supplement it. If they go get a couple bats in free agency, which is much easier to do than pitching, Yes, they can win this division. And yes, I think they'll be in a pennant chase. The Guardians have pitched well, pitch well now, will forever pitch well. But you know what they never do? They don't have a lineup. Minnesota's tried it every which way. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're running away from anybody. The White Sox might play in Amarillo, Texas next year, if you read reports. And the Royals, let me know when they pull their head out of their ass. 
So I don't think you're going far enough. So you raise my overreaction. To a potential overreaction. To a potential overreaction. But no, I think you're spot okay. on. And okay. I think that, that if Well, they, because the thing with Torque, we kept hearing about underlying stats. And I think people were getting fed up with exit velocity and hard hit rate and barrel rate. It's great to know you're making good contact and there's oomph in the bat. But if it was not going to translate, and Mike, when we got to June, it sure as hell wasn't translating. No. We had about a year and a half of sample from Torque that said he couldn't hit pitches over the middle of the plate and he couldn't exit the ballpark. There was real concern this guy was trending towards being a bust. Now, the beauty of it is your career's not over after a year and a half, and you're going to get more ABs. And in his last 150 plate appearances, post-All-Star break, the dude looks like an All-Star. He looks the part. He looks like he's turned a corner. And if this is real, if this is legit, if the underlying stats were the precursor to what the reality is, then this your guy two hitter is Riley Green. Your three hitter is Torkelson. Your four hitter is is Kerry Carpenter. He's insulated. That's the other part. Left handed power, right handed power, on base guy who could take a walk, who's got doubles power. Yep. Two, three, four are, are your core. I can supplement youth, sign two bats. They can contend for this division. Well, think about this. Green could be an on-base monster, right? Great eye, draws pitches. You get him on base. Now Torkelson has to get pitches to hit. Pass the baton. Two, three, four. They're starting to put a lineup together. I uh, I don't think it's an overreaction at all. There are a lot of things I'll, I'll make fun of you for. That ain't one. Torque is an all-star. This team competing. Wait, you said competing. Competing in the Central? No. Winning the Central. No, Penn and Chase in August. That's a very specific thing. Okay. That's taking it another level up from what we saw this year. And I'm not talking about seven games out. No, I'm talking about you're in first or within three or four games in August next year. I could see them be a factor in this division next year. I mean, that's not that big of an overreaction. What are they, like uh, eight and a half back right now? You're saying shave it in half? I mean. Cut it in half next season? Yeah, a little more than that, but yes. Yes. Hey, look, no, no, I there's also, a big question. I Are also don't believe um, every team in this division will basically be under 500 for four months of the year. The other question is what's happening with Eduardo? Because that's been the real source of pessimism is if this guy walks for nothing, are they you replacing they that? They don't need him. They don't need him. They don't need him. You want to you run that by me, how they don't need him? Just They're, so we're on the same page as they, friends? They already have a left-handed pitcher who's going to be every bit as good, if not better, than him and Tarek Skubal. Okay. And they're loaded with pitching. They are. I'm not trying to be like Tigers won't be good guy. I'm just trying to understand where you're no, coming I, well, from. First, first of all, first of all, uh, I'll never accept that Scott Harris allowed that to happen at the deadline. Ever. Ever. I was on vacation, but I'll, I don't have to accept it. The point I'm making is whether if, he... If, if it happens while Mike's on vacation, it doesn't happen. Yeah, that's right. It's not real. <laughs> Alternate reality. But no, I just, I feel like they actually, in very short order, could get good. And Torkelson in green, and Kerry Carpenter being the mythical guy. We always talk about good teams and how you got to find a guy. You got to find an unheralded prospect, or you got to go to the gutter and find somebody else's garbage, and they have to become good. Well, Kerry Carpenter's not some huge prospect. Kerry Carpenter's not some first round pick. It's like an 18 round pick or something. Right. My point is, he's the best left handed power you've had in quite some time. And I don't think it's going anywhere. So that's real. And. Finding some pitching, finding Foley, finding Lang, having a back end of a bullpen, having starting pitching. Hey, maybe Casey Mize comes back, and if he slots in, is a good number four in this league. Not a one, not a two, not a three, but a four. Gives you 150 quality innings. The point I'm making is it's totally okay to criticize these guys when they're ass. But when they're good for long stretches, it is not an overreaction by you or any Tiger fan to say, you know what, I believe. That's the whole point. It's why I get so mad at people with Jared Goff. You know, if if the guy's bad, say it. Don't make excuses. Just say it. But when someone's good, like Goff over the course of 24 games has been a Pro Bowl quarterback, believe. Otherwise, why do you watch this crap? Get a new hobby. Turn on PBS or something. I don't know. Like, just... Torkelson's power is what we've waited for. I don't need him to hit 320. I don't need him to have an 1100 OPS like Barry Bonds. I need you to hit 40 bombs. And how we fill in what happens outside of that determines how good you are. But if you're not hitting for power, you are useless to me. Well, I'm willing to overlook some of the stuff in the field, right? He he butchered a ball yesterday. I'm willing to overlook some of that if this power is real, right? I mean, that's the whole deal is as a first baseman, ideally you can put a guy with a great glove there, but you can get by with a guy who's not a great fielder at first if he consistently leaves the ballpark. I agree. You've got three spots in that order that you you have to have some power. 
third base is one, first base is one. Corner outfield at least one. Yeah, and you know what? It's becoming this way. The shortstop position requires, not that you can just hit, you need some power. So I just, no, I don't think it's an overreaction. But then again, I'm realizing I'm in a town that I don't think cares. But I'm not going to allow you to, to be like, nah, maybe I'm being un- unreasonable. You're not. Just like I thought it was stupid when people defended Tork till the end and he was horrific. Now, the kids played good ball for 60 days. Talk about it. 90 days almost. Talk about it. That's okay. If you're going to hit with this kind of power, here's your bouquet. You're a part of my core. And again, to be an all-star next season, who are the first basemen in the American League? Like, Kenny... Your boy Vlad, he's, a down, he's having a down season. He's Where's he t- been? He's had a terrible. Want to talk about that? No power, no average. I mean, 260 isn't what you paid Vladdy for. I, I won't get into Blue Jays radio. Okay. That's it. My point is, he could be the best first baseman in the American League as early as next season. What's the deal with Marner, 248? <laughs> <laughs> Bobachette Radio, coming up next. Oh, don't get me started on Boba Shed. Uh, I love Kenny. Boba how Shed. about this? We the won't. team never should have given away Lord Scurry. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> George Springer's overpaid. <laughs> David, do you have an opinion? What's the deal with Manoa? All right, we're good. David. Yes, my opinion is if, and this is a big if, they decide to actually spend a little money. In my head, you don't even have to spend a lot. Just get a couple bats. That's right. Get a pitcher, and they can compete. That's it. Now, you talk about World Series stuff. That's different. That's not what we're talking about here. No. But just competing in the division, yes, a few bats and a pitcher or two, and yes, you can compete. My issue is will they be willing to do it? That's my issue with the Detroit Tigers. But I do like what the core they have. I do like what Green's been doing. I do like what what. I especially love what Torque's been doing because I, from the beginning, I kicked him to the curb. I was done with him, and I know it was way too early. I just wanted instant gratification. I wanted to see the success, and I didn't see it. Now I am. I like the core of Carpenter and and um, and Green and Torque. I love it. Yes. Now let's compete. Well, that but the, that's where the owner has to step in. I mean, you could you could sit here and go, well, we're going to show ultimate patience and give a, a youth movement more time. What I'll tell you is it should be both. That that guys like Keith and Justin Henry Malloy, et cetera, those guys can hit sixth, seventh, eighth. It's fine. Spend a little money. Let's get a couple of bats. The pitching's already here, and let's go. Well, do you realize it's not just Miguel's contract that goes off the books? It's like $50 million. Yeah, and on top of it, while you have all these young guys pre-arbitration, they're making nothing. So if there was ever a time to maybe overpay, maybe maybe a little more than you're comfortable with, well, you're getting a discount on Torque and Green and Carpenter. They're all right. pre-arbitration. Well, and plus, think about all the money you're not spending on your ballpark. Sick tube TVs. 2003 called. What? I'm sorry. It's true. It's very true. Thank you. I've been there recently. and It's going to be the 25th anniversary of this park in a short while. How about we put a little money into it? Remember when when they promised us next level upgrades? Still waiting. I don't think they were talking about a Coney pizza. Mike, they moved the fences. Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like one of those weekend projects they show you at Ace Hardware. Hey, I built a deck in six hours. No, you didn't. That's a pile of lumber. I just get tired of it. I get tired of substandard. This is an iconic franchise. Act like it. Christ. You know, like, it's you're not diddling around in Arizona. You're not, you're not one of these ridiculous franchises. I view the Tigers as more than their own fans do, and surely more than their owner does. Yeah, spend a little money, they could contend next year, and Torque could be a big part of it, mm-hmm. because the one thing that is very difficult to find is cheap power. If you got guys who can hit 35, 40 home runs... You do everything you can to hang on to. That is how this game is played. Now, the rules changing, the ability to steal more bases, different things, yes. But the centerpiece of your order, there is no legitimate baseball team that's going to win a World Series that does not have big power in the order. Got to have it. Well, it's as simple as this. Do you want to have four singles to score a run, or do you want one swing of the bat? I mean, it's just harder to win if you need to single people to death. You, you can't fake that. You can't you can't eke out a run every once in a while by grinding it out. That's not a sustainable way to win. No. 
Torque answers it. That's it. And that's where I don't think you're overreacting. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven.